What's up guys, Chicks here from Chicks Tech Reviews. Today I've got my hands on the brand new Mi Cool K6 Hybrid. Now this is a brand new hybrid TV box featuring a built-in multi-TV tuner which includes DVB-T2, DVB-S2 and DVB-C. Now hybrids are quite rare so I do look forward to seeing how this one performs. So first of all inside the box you will find a user manual, an external wireless antenna, HDMI cable, a UK power adapter and I'll tell you the voltage it's 12 watts 1000 MA. You're also getting a fully featured remote control and you can see we have an EPG button, PVR, you've got all your general navigational controls and a lot more. And this is powered by two AAA batteries so I look forward to seeing how this remote performs. And last but certainly not least, the TV box itself. So I'll put the specs on the screen so you guys can have a quick read and while you're reading I'll quickly connect up the wireless antenna. So that basically just screws on quite easily and there we go now this is a hybrid Android TV box so we do have a built-in multi TV tuner and it supports DVB T2 DVB S2 and DVB C now this is powered by the high silicon 3798M quad core CPU and believe it or not that CPU is actually by Huawei now that's combined with the Mali 450 you have 2 gigs of DDR3 RAM 16 gigs of internal storage dual band Wi-Fi AC a hundred megabyte LAN we have no Bluetooth. This is running full Android version 7. I know that's going backwards, but this is actually a 2019 box. It's running Android 7. Now I know we're running an older version of Android, but I believe that's because Android 7 is more compatible with the included DVB software and the recording and PVR functions. So we will be testing all of that out a little bit later. Now this does support 4K HDR at 60 frames per second. We have HDMI version 2.0 and supports 5.1 surround sound. Now at the front of the box we do have an LED display. On the side we have nothing, just a vent. And on the back of the box we have our external Wi-Fi antenna, our digital television ports over here. We've got an AV port, HDMI out, your 100 megabyte LAN, optical out and your power socket. And on the side we have a micro SD card slot, standard USB 2 and a USB 3. So that brings us back to the front and this is what the bottom of the box looks like. So without further ado, let's just get this hooked up to my TV and capture card and find out exactly what it's capable of. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this TV box took 18 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. So here is the home screen for this TV box. You have quite a simple layout. The large and medium shortcuts are all fixed and cannot be edited. However, you do have a small row of icons at the bottom which you can customize with your favorite apps. Now let's head over to the main system settings and go straight to system storage info. Now this box has 16 gigs of internal storage from which 4.53 gigs have been used which leaves you with around 11.5 gigs of free space. And if we have a quick look in about you will see that we are running Android version 7. Now let's check out the system apps. Here are all the apps installed on this box as standard. I have not installed any of these apps and you've got quite a few to get you started including Airpin Pro, Netflix, YouTube and of course the full version of the Google Play Store. You also have your DTV app which is your digital television app and we will be checking that out very shortly. Now first of all let's go ahead and test out some screen mirroring with Airpin Pro. So my iPad did connect immediately with no issues I am running the latest version of iOS 12 and you can see that screen mirroring is working absolutely fine with no lag whatsoever. So this TV box does support iOS screen mirroring with your iPad or your iPhones. But unfortunately Android screen mirroring is not supported. So now we're going to play some 4K video samples from a USB drive using the built-in TV Center app which is more or less exactly the same as Kodi but if you wanted the official version of Kodi all you do is uninstall TV Center then go to the Play Store and install the full version of Kodi. So 
moving on now to the YouTube test and this TV box does support a maximum of 4K on YouTube and 4K at 60 frames per second streams very well, nice and smooth with a very few frame drops. Somebody tried to kill me. Bye. Goodbye. Now this TV box supports 480p streaming on Netflix and here is a quick clip. Both on land and beneath its warm, clear waters, it usually appears serene. And you also have a maximum of 480p streaming on Amazon Prime Video. James says we've got to stop the fuel. So moving on to the gaming test, beginning with Asphalt 8. Now it's time to check out the TV tuner features. Let's do a search first of all on the DVB S2, which is the satellite side, and I am going to search for the Free to Air UK channels. I think I've done this tour a couple of times before. Show why. Iran says it violated Iranian airspace. Why? Pop needle for counter cross stitch because you're a comprehensive two year career. Just uh, the birds, as you can see here. So. So the channels do change quite smooth. You have a seven day EPG TV guide, which is quite useful. And generally you have a smooth navigation throughout. And generally you do have quite a smooth experience throughout. So now I'm actually setting up the DVB T2 side of things. So this time we are using a TV antenna as opposed to a satellite dish. And we are searching for the local UK Freeview channels. Liliana was sent. I'm sorry. Sorry. Is the Sanders sketchbook? Yeah. You know how you. Get him! Get him here fast! Clear out! Roger, come in! Fantastic. Well, lovely to meet you. You too. Thank you, you very show. much. Oh, <laughs> my day. Oh, it's so good. I'm just going to have another go. The crumble we've made. He asked. We'll make a trade. So for you advanced users, DRM Info shows Google Widevine level 3 and here is CPU Z where you can check out the clock speeds and you can see this is running the Mali 450 and this box does not come rooted as standard. And in the Wi-Fi speed test we achieved download speeds of 41 and upload speeds of 18 megabits per second. And the current top speeds we are getting in this office is between 67 to 70 megabits per second. So that brings us to our benchmark scores beginning with Geekbench multi-score of 1497 and in the Antitude benchmark test we achieved 31k so let's see how that compares with the others. So that brings us to our top performing Android TV box chart of 2019 showing you the latest TV boxes and seeing how they compare with each other. So as you can see the new Mikul K6 hybrid has taken position 30 on this chart with a rating of 7.3 out of 10. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the new Mikul K6 hybrid. 
So here are my thoughts on this box. You have a very good performing multi-satellite TV tuner. It supports EPG and PVR so you can record your TV shows directly on a USB drive. On the Android side you have a decent performance, plays basic games fine, but graphic intense games like Asphalt 8 will experience frame drops and lag. But this is the expected performance from a Mali 450 device. Furthermore, YouTube streams 4K pretty good, and you have Amazon Prime and Netflix at 480p max. There is no drop down status menu, no Bluetooth, average Wi Fi speeds, and no mirror cast. Bottom line, we rarely see new hybrid Android TV boxes. This one is priced quite low, and for the price, it offers a pretty good TV tuner experience and decent Android performance to go with it. And with that being said, I will leave the links in the description so you guys can check this product out. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a brilliant day. See you in the next one, guys.